Welcome to Let's Talk Geek, episode 48, Old MacDonald Had a Farm. In today's show, how to build your own tractor, Angry Birds on Chrome, and a new ticketing system for South Africa's theatres. Thank you for watching. Welcome to Let's Talk Geek, episode 48. Old MacDonald had a farm. Um, I don't know where that came from. Stu? It's our first story. Oh, Open farm course, equipment. Yes. <laughs> okay, but before we get into that, let's just go who's with us tonight. Uh, we've got the usual crowd, uh, Johan Alst Mixing, Stuart Allen, and Jan Vermeulen, and myself, Tim Hawk. And then our guest for tonight is Rabin. Um, do you want to tell us a bit about yourself? Uh, Twitter handles, Facebook, where can people find you? Yeah, Twitter handle, at Rabin Hardeth. Uh, Facebook, Rabin Hardeth. <laughs> R-A-B-I-N-H-A-R-D-U-T-H. Cool, it will be at the bottom of your screens now, so you can yep. just copy it off. Oh, they see it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Um, but we'll, we'll go into more details while you're here on the show and stuff, and who exactly you are good. and what you do. Um, all right, but let's get into the actual proper show. Uh, events first. Uh, okay. 20th of May, we have Pirates of the Caribbean, episode four. <laughs> it's a really slow month. <laughs> we're There's nothing we're scraping the bottom of well, the barrel well, here. Missed, know, they, look, they had a couple of things earlier. We had Upcon uh, last weekend. Yeah, and there was, some there was MS Devs or something. Uh, Google MS4 I.O. yesterday. Yeah, they had okay. in Johannesburg. They had another Google event last week, Tuesday. Uh, it, there's been so much stuff, and all of a sudden now, now that we've got a show, it's very quiet. It's um, the, on the tree first of May is the SAAF uh, Museum Air Show. Yeah, that should be quite fun. That's going to be fun. Where yeah. is it? Where is it going to be? Uh, SWAT Corps. Yeah. All right. So yeah. come early. I think it, the gates open at nine. O- no, the gates open at seven or eight, and the show starts at nine. So if you're there early, because then you can get sit right on the flight line. Sure. Like cool. always, uh, just go to start dates. That's your ZA. Yep. Yep. Find us there. That's but we will probably be there if on. Possibly the Sunday, and we'll do some outside broadcasting again from there. Cool. Yeah. Awesome. All right. Into our topics. But yeah, start out. So also, if you've got any events you want to send us yourself, yeah. send it to us, uh, events at letstalkgeek.net or events at altistar.tv, or and we'll add them into the start I've got some you. crap to add to the calendar at Let's yeah. Talk okay. Geek. <laughs> I- any name you want to, if it comes up with an interesting Is name. Start date's it's not like a dating service or no? No. Oh, okay. That is not date. excellent. Come on. Uh, come on. Star, star, star Trek, <laughs> Star Date, whatever, whatever. <laughs> actually, I cool. totally broke your speed there. <laughs> 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 but actually, you know, what's, is that where you go to date the stars? <laughs> the stars. <laughs> Remember but, but me? I was an idol seven years ago. <laughs> <laughs> but if they have that, it would have to be exclusive because only stars would want, would want to date <laughs> other stars. So you wouldn't want the common people to find out about it. <laughs> You're overthinking it. Oh, I know. I, know. <laughs> I just think it's a great way to make money. It's a cool domain of, to have. Out of gullible people. Oh, it's a cool domain <laughs> to have, so maybe it'll pay off one day. I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> I need the money. <laughs> <laughs> I've got three kids. So <laughs> <laughs> cool. All right. Uh, into our first topic, which is open source farming equipment. This is actually very, very cool. Um, basically, some guys, uh, he was, I think he went to MIT. Yep. And did incredibly well there. And then went and decided to be a farmer. Yep. And then and failed. Failed miserably. Horribly. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, then he decided that, screw it, there must be a better way. Yeah. So he well, The main thing you said was cost. Yeah, the it's cost of the equipment. It's just too expensive. Um, so, so he was basically living on the bread line anyway, just from the farming. And then now he had to buy all this equipment to, 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 turn, a, to turn a profit or to turn anything. And um, he just couldn't cope with it. And an example is he bought this, ex- bought this expensive tractor. Yeah, it was a hundred and something thousand dollars. Then it broke. Yeah. And it, yeah. yeah. Then he fixed it. Then and then it broke, broke again. again. And then he had to send it in because he couldn't fix it. And then it came back, spent a whole bunch of money, and then it broke again. So he decided, well, screw it. He's going to build himself his own tractor. And he <laughs> spent, what, $6,000? I don't look at the exact, but yeah, they, they six, on average, it's one third cheaper yeah. than any commercial tractor you And he built it, in his, built it in his garage over, over a couple of weeks. And there you go. He's and then posted the stuff online. And he got other enthusiast people into like real hardware and motors wow. and stuff. And they started co- collaborating. An Android farmer. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's crazy. 
Um, oh. And then from that, they basically went and put together. What They've they got call what they call the uh, civilization, global, global civilization starter kit, yeah. which is the fifty most used machines in civilization, and they want to open source all of them, oh, wow. and up, they're up to sixteen now. 16 pieces of equipment. Yeah. So they've got a so they've got tractors that drill they've got a tractor and you can drill holes with it and plant seeds they've and like they've got uh, some harvesting equipment. They've got a plasma cutters. They've uh, got a whole a whole brick series makers. Of brick makers. Yeah. Uh, he uh, says he can make 5000 bricks a, a day out of his brick making machine and things like that. So and the thing uses um, basically your common sand to make yeah. the bricks. So it's a whole cool effect. Uh, Basically, you, you, put, you put your brick maker down, you dig your earth out, you throw it into your brick maker, and it sits there and it compresses it. Yeah, and it's then you bake very it. Very hard bricks. Yeah. And then, yeah, so it's And incredible. it's all off the shelf parts, off the shelf hydraulics, I beams, nothing fancy. And I know you're even looking into at some point making motors and yeah. designs, and also some way of making motors so you can chain them together or something. Um, but it's a, it's a, it's a like cool a idea. For real people. Yes. yes. For real people, mechanical. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like I don't know, if, Johan, if they sent you the video tour. Okay, don't worry. In the wave, but that's okay. Don't worry. It's very cool. If you actually look at the little tractor, it is, does look very mccono ish You know, you know, if, if the Lego, the, the Lego yeah. like motor, like no, it, it, it looks like that. Yes, like yes, yeah. And that's, Except that's this good. works. Yeah, <laughs> no, exactly. And that's what I was gonna say. It's like I understand, you know, car enthusiasts. You know, if you've got your Mustang or you've got your chopper, you know, you build up your bike. Yeah. From scratch, or your trike. Like you get these guys that build up trikes yes, yes, from yeah. scratch. So this is kind of new. Yeah, B building build your own tractor. But that's the thing. It's um, it's quite interesting that it's, and it's simple, hey. It's really that you know anybody can build it. Um, well, so look, eventually they're gonna. What's it? Okay, I don't know what some of the stuff is, but uh, 3D scanners, 3D printers. Oh yeah, they go models. all out. They've got draw presses that they've made. Bioplastics and boat. Eventually, they say if they can get all these things open sourced, you can re basically reboot civilization with one of these kits. So they say we might need that in 2012. Go, you, you just buy like this huge freaking plot out in the middle of the somewhere, <laughs> yes. and then go ship some people and then in just, and then press reset. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. You know, and then six years later, you'll have industry, infrastructure and industry. And yeah, or it would be the stuff you can make your roads with it. You can then stop. Uh, planting, look, you'll need seeds and stuff, etc. obviously. But you can start farming with this stuff, all your building material, mm. uh, the things to make bigger things. Mm. So, no, very cool, very well, cool but, but we all know that the only piece of land that's going to survive is KwaZulu-Natal. Yeah. In the Drakensberg. In the Drakensberg. So is Pretoria. <laughs> 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 no, dude, it's not actually. It's the Cape of Good Hope in KwaZulu-Natal. How's that Cape <laughs> of Good Hope going to survive? No, you have no, to be on no, the Drakensberg. No, it's, dude. It's, have you watched it's a the movie? Oh, summer was very bad. <laughs> Dude, it was. It's so bad. Okay, we're not even going to go there. <laughs> it's just so bad. <laughs> it was very bad. Well, don't worry. The world's going to end next weekend anyway, so. Um, 21st. Are these some of the pictures of the goodies? Yes. Yes. Yeah. 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 These are yeah, all the things they're wanting to build. Uh, if you fast forward a tiny bit more, <laughs> <laughs> there's like a the track to <laughs> <laughs> Um, right. <laughs> as, as somebody, uh, Celia in the chat room mentioned, uh, he did a TED talk where you talked about this. Yeah, that's where I saw it because that's where I, I um, someone, se it. someone sent me the TED talk link and I watched the TED talk and that's where I, I well, somebody read up about it. Quite a bit of time on TED this week. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, actually, we've, Maybe. Uh, we've been off air for a long, long time. time. Eh? <laughs> right, into the next, let's move from that into the next topic, which is Stats are Cool, which is also from another TED talk. I think you, you've missed a topic. Uh, I have highlighted it. Who's a TED Talk guy? The beer, be your first oh, beer. Oh, first beer. <laughs> okay. Aren't you going to talk about oh, it at least a little bit? We, we, we brewed beer uh, about seven days ago. Finally, we actually got around to doing it. Incredible. Sorry, Tim. Who's we? Me and Cecilia. Oh, just checking. Are you um, going to give her any credit for helping you? Cecilia and I. Of course not. <laughs> 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 nice one. Uh, no, no, Cecilia was part of it. Um, it, it. We didn't do the full grain brewings. We didn't do the the full hectic where you uh, there's a whole process of yes, grains yeah. and you've got to get the right temperatures and then mash does it. We did the basically from a tin, and it you, anybody can do it. It it really is that easy. It takes about forty five minutes to make. It made, we made twenty two liters in forty five minutes. <laughs> um, you go, you buy your kit, you buy the tin. It is really really easy. Uh, basically, open tin, throw in pot. Add boiling water. Uh, that's your malt. You add a kilogram of sugar, which came, comes in your kit. 
Uh, so they even include the sugar in your kit? They include everything in the oh, kit. Oh, fluff, that's cool. They don't include a pot. So you need a pot. 20 liters in 45 minutes. Yep. Yeah. Okay, but it's not drinkable then, eh? Because there's no alcohol in it or anything. Okay, so then that's so the beginning of it. That's yeah, the that's the beginning. That's the, okay. Yeah, that's the work. Um, so that's basically, that's to get your initial stuff. So you basically open tin, throw in, add, add sugar, boiling water, two liters of water, mix it all together, basically melt it all together, throw that into your fermenting plastic um, barrel, barrel. Uh, then fill that up with water, get the water temperature. So you have full up to about 20 liters. And then you, you want to get the temperature down to about t between 20 and 27 degrees. So then we added another two liters just to get the temperature perfect. And you seal it. And you put all this little cool bubbler thing on top. And, uh, and you add yeast. Sorry, I forgot the most important. <laughs> you add yeast. And then you seal it and you put your bubbler on top. And it's pretty cool because it immediately starts bubbling. It's just, <laughs> there's something really cool about this bubbling thing. So it's releasing all the cum dioxide. Yeah. And then you just put it somewhere warm or say in the, those temperature ranges and you leave it. And they say within seven days you can start drinking, but it's better if you leave for two weeks. And then we, we sort of now at the eight day range, we, we tap some off just to taste. Every, well, a couple it's of not guys. bad. Yeah. It's really not bad. It, it's, it's a bit light on the alcohol. You I said it was it about like 3% or something. Yeah, it's between 3 and 6%. Yeah, it's on the, I'd say it's on the yeah, lower end. Lower it's end. 3 or double. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, 3 to 3.6. 3 to 3.6. 3 3 yes. Ah, those are between 3 and 6. Yeah, so it's still quite, I actually okay. sort of like that. But the next one, we're going to try making a bit of a stronger, a, a red ale, and then we might try a stout later on. It's, but it's pretty tasty. It's, it's not bad. It's not bad. We still need to carbonate it though. So yeah, no, problems. it's flat. So can you ask a pertinent question? Sure. Go for How it. much did this shit cost? <laughs> <laughs> um, I think all in all costs about a thousand rand. Um, but then but that's your setup cost. That's so. setup cost. So Everything. that's buckets. So I mean, that's buckets. That's a twenty liter, twenty something liter. So your next batch yield would hundred rand. Your twenty two liters. Yes. Which makes sense. It so makes rand. Well. Yeah. yeah, that's cool. So okay, yeah, uh, they've got the Brewmaster website in front of you. If you ah. look at it, uh, from here you, you go. Basically, there's a kit you can buy from them, which we bought. And then basically you just need to buy the um, pot as well. Yeah. It's anything you need to add. And like cleaning liquids. Yes. Um, Is there anything that you can add to it? Like if you wanted to put some rosemary? If you yes. want to. It's nothing well, stopping so it. There's no, no, so there's not no so flavor much. portfolio. It's just like you do these things and then well, if you want to add or not. With this step here, the thing is they've already done some of the work for you. So in the in the normal brewing process, you've got different grains you can use to add different flavors okay, and chocolate so you've flavors. Got to go that way so, so they've gone that for your adding already. Nando sauce. Yeah, <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> thinking uh, that's the way to go. Also, you get different hops and 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 yeast that you use. So they've already done that. They've done ninety percent of it. So like okay. our next one, what we're going to do is we're not going to use sugar. We're going to go buy malt, extra malt, which is basically what you get from the grain. Oh, okay. So we're going to do a full malt. So yeah. you have a bit of. Better flavor, flavor, yes. Better color, um, but really, I th you you pretty much open to do what you want. It's mm. hey, it might taste rubbish, but yeah. But if you want it at that point, <laughs> you, you think it's worth a go? I mean, yeah. Come around December, <laughs> <laughs> you're thinking, <laughs> what's my budget going to be anyway? <laughs> yeah. Get a couple it. of it so wee bits it. and yeah, let's yeah. go. But also, if you get this, you can get involved with the brewing this uh, Warthogs Brew Club. Yeah, and we went to their brew festival. Mm. Uh, summer beer festival four weeks ago. I think they had nine. I saw something on your site. Yeah, they had yeah. 92 beers there. So basically, if you've um, said you'll give them beer, I think for each liter of beer, you get X amount of tickets. Yeah. Um, so we had a friend who brewed, I think, 40 liters. So he had a couple of tickets. So we got two nice. tickets for that. And you then wander around and drink beer. It costs us 72 rand for the tickets. So it's the beginning of your own little microbrewery. Yes. Yeah. So obviously, yeah. microbreweries are, you know, you have. They're, but, you know, they're more commercially viable, yes, etc. Yeah, yeah. So this is as a first to go attempt. Yes, and it's it was so easy. And I'm it sure it sounds of fun as well. It is actually, and, and I've a and put it this way: this Tim is, Tim has drunk some of this, and he's still alive. So that's oh, also so it's a good. Not like stuff. it's not. It's Wonga. not. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, look, I drank last night, and I drank some more today. So <laughs> you don't want to make your life. Yeah. Tim, I've got a question. How did you actually come to that? It's what two and a half percent alcohol. Okay, it's how you actually measure it. Um, is, is So first of all, as you add the sugars and the malt, uh, it consume, assume water is like one. As you add sugars and stuff, it gets heavier. So you get something called a hydrometer that measures the weight of the water. Mm -hmm. And as you add the malt and stuff, it's become heavier. So then it gets to like 1.04. The, as Then as the 
yeast and stuff converts that back into alcohol, it gets closer and closer to one. So you, you take your, basically the weight at the beginning of the brew. Yes. And then at the end, and you minus the two together, and then there's a formula you plug that into. Okay. <laughs> Uh, it, it sounds complicated, but it's actually a lot uh, simpler than it is. And like apparently it was 3 to 4%. So, so yeah. now w- when you measure the alcohol, it says percent volume. Um, can, can you explain how the, uh, how the measurement works there? Um, I mean, it's not, um, it's not the way I understand it from, from science, probably back in standard eight. The when, when you say something is 2.5%, you know, by when volume. they say by volume... Um, that's that's not like two and a half percent of the thing is alcohol. Yes, it, means it, is. Yes, it is. Yeah, is it? So if you've got yeah. a liter, two per- two moles or what's it? Two hundred fifty. No, no, two moles, moles of it is alcohol. It's alcohol. Cool. Twenty moles. Twenty moles. Sorry, twenty moles. Yeah, no, no. It's yeah. You know, just multiply. There's no no fancy. Well, what they do say is, some of them they've got like three to four percent, and in which case is a you know they there's a variance. Yeah. There's a variance. Yeah. Um, but no, there's no weird things with the alcohol. Cool. The weird stuff just happens after you drink it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, we, uh, unfortunately, we really uh, drunk it. But um, and with, with, like, one of the th- interesting things, though, so you know when they go about how some beers are cleaner and castle, it's not a real beer or whatever. The only difference is the sugars that they've used. It's still the same fermenting. They're still just basically water. Um, in their case, they had water hops, and apparently they must be use like a milli as their starch, as extra starch, because it's cheaper than buying... Uh, just using malt. Yeah. But other than that, there's no chemicals added. There's nothing else like that. But I must say, I do prefer the, the real brewed beer. <laughs> right. Okay, moving along. Moving Kay. along. Yeah. <laughs> Stats are cool. Yes. Stu, do you want to intro this? Well, I don't know. I just watched a BBC documentary that was, <laughs> called, <laughs> that was called The Joy of Stats. Stats. And it was cool. <laughs> and, uh, and then Tim found out a whole bunch about the professor that did the show. So, all right. Uh, uh, basically, no, he's got a website called Gapminder. He did uh, what was the name of the show again? Uh, the Joy of Stats. The Joy of Stats. And yeah. basically, looked into basically wh- when stats started being recorded and why they're so cool and why they they're so useful. And it's basically, um, for instance, like they picked up all the infant mortality and then started fix that and find problems where the death, what's causing. Yeah, because his big thing is the he does he works for the World Health Organization, eh? Yeah, on just the general health of the world and statistics. How are you, how you figure that out? Um, and basically, they've they've got this thing called Gapminded, De- and they've got a desktop app and a on their website, and you can basically go in and what's really cool is you can play the stats, so they yeah. actually move. So you can like they've got um, as time goes by, let's say. Child, uh, the life, how many, life how expectancy many, one was pretty cool. Yeah, or, or even children, how many, ch- as p- the rate, people, amount of children, uh, what's it? Children per, per, per family. Per family. To death rate at what age. And actually, you can see, as, as women, it's with women have fewer children, they actually live longer. Ah, so the mortality increases. Yes. Um, and there's a whole bunch of interesting stats, and you can pull it out, and they've got a desktop app, and you can play with the stats, and... and, and and it actually moves. Um, even like uh, it's a death rate to GDP and stuff like that. Yes. And one of the things that they highlight with Swana, but they show where, and they show you where ate it in Africa, and it's scary. It takes us in the 1990s back to about 1950 uh, average age that a person lives to, and then you can see where they fixed it. And it's a steep climb again. It's 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 quite interesting to see how those stats pan out. Yeah. And if you can see, I don't know if we've we've uh, discussed his his previous work on another episode. I don't remember now, but he's he's um, one of his episodes on BBC was he investigated the health and wealth of the world over time. I don't know if you guys have seen that video. Yes, yeah. yes, yeah. So if you get a chance, hit up YouTube and look for that video. And it's not always correlated. I don't know if you saw it that. Ah, so like the wealth <coughs> the, the the world gets. Do we get healthier or do we get poor, do we get sicker? Well, it's basically it's also along the if if you're wealthier, does that I- it directly translate to? Better mortality or longer life, life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and not always. <coughs> not always. Yeah, wow. depends where you are. Yeah, yeah. So, but it, it was sort of just the, um, the the thing he was analyzing was how the world 
has changed over time. So if you look yeah. at, you know, if you look at, I think he starts the, the stats from just no, by, the, yeah, by yeah. the Industrial Revolution yeah. and then takes it through. And as we industrialize and as, you know, more people, you know, as uh, medical science rather improves, how the health of the world improves and how the Western world, um, for the most part, uh, become yeah. become wealthier and wealthier while it leaves certain parts of the world behind. They take a look at some of the uh, some of the effects of colonialism, uh, where where the, the the guys who have who have empires elsewhere in the world sort of grow wealthier, but they leave their colonies behind. Yeah, that sort of thing. So, very but it's interesting. interesting. Uh, uh, oh right, they've they've got yeah, it on the screen. Yeah, and um, basically so in, in like eighteen ten, the whole world was packed down to the to the bottom corner. All poor, all died early, and then. Uh, <laughs> Like t then it goes up to 2010, and you see it's all stre it's stretched out. Africa still poor and dies early, but the West is you can. It's right. quite interesting. Yeah, yeah. So it's almost like what I did. It's almost like <clears throat> once countries le reach above a cert above a certain level of wealth, yeah, then they can start to afford health care and all the rest of it. And at that stage, it's it's then becomes more how they. Uh, use that. So like China went quite high, even though it had a much lower GDP at the stage earlier on. But obviously they implemented something in, but all of them breaks certain parts. If you look at the grass. Yeah, all of a sudden they shoot up. Yeah. yeah. And, and what's interesting is somewhere in that video, he actually specifically highlights South Africa. Uh, firstly, the first thing he highlights is the First World War. You see the the world population just taken. And the Second yeah. World War, yeah. Yeah, you just see the, 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 the wars like cause a massive spike mm. in death as it were to catastrophe and then he actually as he progresses he actually specifically highlights south africa and says some countries get hit by hiv so south africa uh, wealth wise we're doing okay health wise hiv so has creamed yeah. us yeah yeah i mean especially i don't even think south africa means southern africa you go namibia botswana yeah. well Everything sub-Sahara. That's what I said. They're, they're looking at Botswana in, in one of their things. And you see it's this very nice growth, 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 population, growth, population, growth. And then it reaches a, a certain thing. And then it, it instead of just this, you, know, you would think maybe the slow drop, right, so no. it just goes straight down. Good and it goes back to, basically back to the population level that we they were at in, in the 1950s. Yeah, that's, that's the life expectancy. Yeah. Yeah. And then you can see where they fix it. And it's, once again... Rather night, which is pretty cool. It it goes quite quickly, at very up at a high rate. Yeah. Um, so it's not this once again gradual growth again. So stats are cool. They are very stats cool. Are cool. Yeah. <laughs> Go check it out. Uh, we'll obviously put all the thing, but check out gapminder.org. Being in video production, I must just say the work that BBC did on this video is just unbelievable. Yeah, okay. the so the way the visualizations the and visualization stuff. Visualization yeah. and it borders onto something that was done by Discovery, I think, where. Um, they also walk between the planets. It's that whole series about the planets. Okay. So there is another one, but the work done here is just unbelievable. I found the piece about South Africa. Unfortunately, we're not going to pull audio here. Um, but, yeah, it, it definitely highlights South Africa for something. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's that HIV thing I was talking about. But anyway. Cool. All right. Right. Okay. Uh, into the stand. reason why we have been here to talk about him. <laughs> <laughs> like, you guys are like the weirdest Ku Klux thing in the world. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, there's no sheets, but there's lots of cords and microphones. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, all the things you can get up to. With <laughs> all the things you can get up to. I was like, well, what we do is need we, an we, accountant that badly. Come on. <laughs> we, we torture you by putting you on it. <laughs> cool. Cool. Um, who are you? Uh, the loaded question. <laughs> yes. Um, and then we're going to go into some of the questions. And I, I know basically one of the things why, why, which sparked my interest to initially talk to you was the online uh, ticket printing. Mm -hmm. So I'll go into that and all the rest of it. It's sort of who you are, the start of, yeah. um, what you do. I grew up in a little suburb called Anasia out uh, south of Johannesburg. Moved, moved out in uh, 91 and finished school at Hyde Park High School. Uh, got into architecture was an architect for 13 years. Um, about eight to nine years ago, I started doing stand-up comedy, just as a side. Okay. How did um, you get into just... Actually, I was out having dinner once with some buddies, and they were at a comedy function. And in the interval of the comedy show, they said, well, when you open the second half, you're having a thing called open mic. So everyone's to come up and tell a joke and, you know... <laughs> go for it. You win yeah. a bottle of champagne type thing. And all my friends are like, hey, you're the guy, go. <laughs> <laughs> and I went and I won the competition, and the guys were like, cool, and... The guy was like, actually, you a bit of a natural. You, Came you, across waxed, well, you yeah. creamed these guys. <laughs> you creamed these guys. I was like, yeah, cool. Then he said, if you're keen, 
And at that time, I was already writing comedy. I haven't, I haven't been performing it yet. And I called him up a week after that, and that was it. That was October 2003, and doing comedy. And after like a year or two in comedy, I realized there was a business side to comedy. Okay. So I found out that no one was actively going out and getting venues for comedians. There was three or four venues happening in Johannesburg, and the people that ran them decided to call you or not to call you. So if you're a comic wanting to do I'm comedy, you just wait hard, for the phone yeah. to call. You yeah. wait for the phone to ring, and then you might get a gig. So I just go into restaurants and ask them if they've ever had live entertainment there. And they'd be, yeah, you know, we have bands on a Tuesday night. Mm. It's mm. like, fine, so what's a bad night for you? They'd say, well, Tuesdays are bad for us, or Wednesdays are bad for us. I'd say, what about comedy? And they'd go, what do you mean, what about comedy? And I'd say, what if we come through and, you know, you advertise, charge people 30 bucks at the door? And, you know, that time comedy was... Uh, still a lot there, there were a few yeah. well-known people. They were like your Barry Hilton's, your John Vismas's, David Cow. That was it. There was like five comics that South African people knew as South African stand-up comics. But then there were guys who were bubbling under, guys like Joe Ras Den and Darren Wackett Simpson and all these guys. So at that time, Darren had obviously you just started up on radio mm -hmm. and... Mm -hmm. People knew him, so if I telling club owners and restaurant owners, um, listen, I'll bring like Wackett Simpson and Joe Rustin and Darren Moore. They'll be a lot more interested. Like, in oh stuff. wow, yeah, we know these guys from TV. We know these guys from radio. Yeah. So I just you know I just charge them a fixed rate of a couple of grand for the night, two or three grand, and I'd say if you sell a hundred tickets at thirty bucks, you'd make your money to pay us, but then you'd have a hundred bucks, hundred people eating your food and drinking your drink. Yeah, yeah. So they were like, wow. So I caught onto this. So eventually, I started doing. One a week, then two a week. At some point, I was running eight of these little club gigs a week. Oh, very cool. So I didn't have to go to the ATM. I never, <laughs> I'd always, <laughs> I'd have, you know, 300 bucks on Sunday, 200 bucks on Tuesday, 400 on Wednesday. Still maintaining the architecture, still doing architecture yeah, yeah. during the day. That must have been quite hectic uh, doing two yeah, jobs. But, well, it was, for me, it was a weird thing because it was, that time it was clearly split between come home, have a shower, have something to eat, and then comedy. Mm, it mm. was different. Yeah. It wasn't like it was, there was any overlap during the day. Mm. Um, as it got more and more, and I started becoming more and more friendly with the comedians, excuse me, they realized I've, they got a good relationship with me. I wasn't trying to rip them off. In fact, if anything, as a comedian, I understood yeah, that yeah. you know they were getting ripped off other promoters, etc. So they were keen to work with me, and I was so excited about comedy, I've always been excited about comedy, that I'd pick them up and drive them to the gigs and Give them money and you know do all sorts <laughs> do of things. Right right yes. tabs and you know and all of a sudden it's I was basically like this facilitating in, in yes, the background, and making and sure everything happened. Then like a couple of guys started calling me the the patron saint of comedy in Johannesburg. I was just this guy, <laughs> like I had this weird halo and jokes. <laughs> like I just, yeah. I'd go around and help these guys, and then eventually it just kind of escalated that I started booking people for corporate gigs. So companies like Deloitte would phone and say, "We hear you do this comedy thing. Um, we're having our end of year function." but we'd like two or three comedians. Could you arrange a lineup after dinner? All, the, all our guests can sit and watch comedy. We'd be like, fine. And then we started doing these corporate club gigs and stuff like that. And eventually I, st I was thinking, wow, I could actually, you know, it's becoming a bit lucrative. If I'm taking 20% from all these guys, I just became Mr. 20% that now it's kind of my architecture and mm. now the comedy is kind of creeping over. And eventually it came to a head where last year, September or so, uh, comedians were asking me to put together tours for them and like nationwide tours in all the big theaters and doing stuff. And so I resigned from architecture eight months ago just to do, to book a many cool. comedians. Enjoying it and, and... Yeah, it's good. I mean, we've done, um, for a company that's more, I mean, my brother resigned from his job to help me out as well. And uh, well, he runs the operation side of mm -hmm. it and I run, and he runs operation and production. I run more of the management side. Um, we manage Trevor Noah. Sorry, I've just had a question in the chat. Uh, oh. How how did you land up managing Trevor Noah? We did a gig in Indonesia once at the <laughs> okay. Gandhi Hall. <laughs> I love my story start like that. Well, it was back in '87 <laughs> in Indonesia, the old country. No, uh, we did this gig in Indonesia about two years ago. It was December of 2009. So uh, December 2009, and uh, Trevor Noah was there, and he came through to the show, and it was a sellout, and there was 900 people in the theater, and he was like, "Wow, this is the middle of Indonesia." And 900 people paid money to come <laughs> see comedy. And we're like, yeah. And he's like, and you guys did all of this yourselves? And we're like, yeah. And he was like, well, if you're keen on this, you know, why don't you just produce a tour for me? Oh, Can you cool. do a tour for me? I've been trying to get other guys to do tours for me, and it's just taking them months, and they're always telling me about can't get the venue, can't do this, can't get that. And basically, we put together a five-city tour for him in about a week. 
Okay. Cool. And right. so he just went, wow. You, you, and then, and then you from delivered there, and then we, we delivered and we started going on tour. And it was weird. I mean, the first time we went around, I for, like the day before I realized, shit, we need to get like lanyards, you know, like <laughs> things that say backstage and the tour. <laughs> and yeah, the crew like, and like the crew thing, yeah. Yes. So we went, we got these things laminated by like this Nigerian printing shop around the corner from my house. And it, it was weird. And they got it laminated and they punched the hole and stuff. But we never had lanyards. So we just had these cards. So anyway, we fly to PE, arrive. You know, we're walking around doing all the, the sound checks and stuff. And Trevor's arriving later. And I'm with my brother. I was like, we've got these cars. I don't know what to do. <laughs> I was like, this is what we're doing. We're going to Checkers. He was like, what are we doing in Checkers? Go to Checkers. Are they selling shoelaces? Yes. <laughs> 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 Find the longest rugby boot shoelace we can. Buy 10 of them. And then you we got lanyards. We yeah. had lanyards. We had lanyards with, with the rugby. So, I mean, it took us from there. Now we like, you know, we, we get our lanyards up front. And we, you know, we've got well, lanyards. We do all that as you do stuff. more often, you get as used we do to more often, and, and basically in the last... Like I said, Trevor and I, we did um, Scratch That Tour. We did almost 44 performances, all sold out. Um, and now his Goodbye For Now Tour, we did pretty much exactly the same amount of venues, the same amount of performances. Cool. About 44, uh, we just had a, another question here, Rob. Um, were you involved in the South Sea thing at all? No. I got no. involved with Trevor almost as South Sea started hitting, oh, okay. started hitting um, public. Um, I, I started helping him. I started helping him. I started working with Trevor. All right. Cool. And then there's two other questions here. Uh, d no, one, one really. other. Okay. How, how did you deal with bad comedians? <laughs> you pay them, you shake the hand and hope that they don't call you back. <laughs> 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 I mean, at some point, I was a bad comedian to some promoters. At some point, <laughs> I'd go and not laugh. Because the weird thing with comedy is it's very simple. Yeah. You get on stage, you make people laugh. If you make people laugh, well done. If you can make people laugh consistently... You're doing well. You're doing well, then you're a good comic. If you don't make people laugh, and it's then it's poetry. Then then it's not comedy. <laughs> then you should it's just something go. else. Then it's something else. It's <laughs> variable. Good. If you're yeah. not getting a response from an audience, then it, you're just reading stuff. Do you find like some comedians though? You, I would imagine some have good audience, or, or you know, some people pick up on audience as well. Yeah, it's it, difficult to read an audience. If I'm doing an audience, if I'm doing a golf day at a corporate for Santam Insurance. <laughs> You gotta know that there's a specific kind of human being Person in that, on that room. Side, yes. Seventy or eighty percent of that room is made up of a, you know, citizen X. If you're doing a gig like Cool Runnings at the Underground in um, in Melville on a Sunday night, it's students. They've been drinking the whole afternoon. Far it's more fun, chilled, yeah. fun crowd. You're doing a gig at Tan's Cafe in in in, in Four Ways. Some uncle is just paid with his gold card and he's eating 150 rand steak with his wife and it's their date night out and. You know, so you gotta you gotta pick up on these things. Um, also, when you're doing corporate gigs, I mean golf days is golf days. People have more fun and stuff, but corporates basically like they have the end of year function. Like I'm I'm doing one for Deloitte in two weeks time, where literally there's been one little girl who was like the PA to the director or something, and in the beginning of the year she was given a budget, <laughs> and then she said on the 26th of June or 26th of May, we're having a, a an awards evening for all our top salesmen. And it's you, Jessica. You've got to do... You've <laughs> oh, got to make this event. <laughs> <laughs> it has to be good. So I've done hundreds of corporates in my life. But for her, this is her one corporate. Yeah. So she wants to make sure that everything is perfect, that there's a tablecloth, the settings, all that stuff. And in a weird way, without making Jessica look bad, <laughs> is she's always going to be anal. <laughs> she's yes. always going to want you to do be there three hours before for a sound check. Can your call time be three hours before your performance? And I'm like, no, it doesn't, doesn't have to be. I mean... You've you done this eight, so many times. I'll be there at seven thirty. You know, I'll drink a glass of water, have a whiskey, and then go on stage, and then it'll be fine. Yeah, but you we want you to debrief and you know to yeah. do a technical <laughs> briefing up front. You're and right. then when you get there, then she's put everybody on tenterhooks hooks because the whole office now for the last five months has just heard on Jessica and this thing and Jessica and this thing. So they come and they like, oh, we don't have shit on her parade or whatever. We just want to uh, whatever. So it's weird. So now you there tasked because now also before you go on and do comedy. Inadvertently, there's someone pointing at a bar chart or a pie graph or <laughs> something <laughs> going, you know, the inflation for the year and the Is thing. Yeah. And then people are like, cheap, let's just, let's just get the it's dessert. The try, or, yeah. Yeah. And then you left to do the happy bit. You left to go there and go, okay, 300 people. It's not a school night. Let's just go out. And hopefully it works. Awesome. All right. I'm going to start talking about going into more one of the things. I also saw like with all, all your venues, you said you don't, you mainly do it all through social media. Yeah. So we, I wanted to ask you about that. And also then to tell us about your website, Comic Revolution. Comic Revolution. 
Yeah. Comic Evolution was the name of the. Ah, hey, look, Comic Evolution was the was what I started right at the beginning, seven eight years ago when I started in nine years ago when I started in comedy, was just changing the way people perceive comedy, change the way comedians see themselves mm-hmm. in the industry, change the way uh, people um, see comedy as an option or a choice. My thing was to get if you get a, enough venues going, say in a city like Johannesburg. You've got East Rand, you've got West Rand, Pretoria, Jobic Centurion. If you've got two or three venues in each of those parts of the city or parts of the bigger metropolis, um, on two or three nights a week that has fairly decent comedy, you'll find that comedians want to do more comedy. So now we've, you know, we'll book all that up. So once you've got like a comedy circuit going, like you do in London, like you do in New York, like you have everywhere else in the world, uh, we don't have any comedy culture in South Africa. Well, I would imagine it's also as, as more shows get done, the comedians do get more practice, they get better. Be- get better. People that go to shows go, <laughs> South African comedy is not bullshit. Actually, it's pretty decent. More people get into more it. More people get into going to comedy. And now you get to a point where um, guys like Trevor, guys like Eugene, uh, guys like Luis Gola can have TV shows and run big ad campaigns. And, you know, sure, that's the, the, the plus side of it for them. But also they're pretty decent comics. Um, I watched an American comic the other day who we see in TV shows like 30 Rock and stuff. Killed it in 30 Rock. He's my favorite guy, Tracy Morgan. Oh, yes, yeah. Sure, favorite, yeah. favorite. Watched his HBO special the other day. Switched off after seven minutes. <laughs> <laughs> I think, in a weird way, South African audiences are snobs when it comes to comedy. Because, sure, we never had a lot of comedy for years and years and years. Yeah. But the comedy that we do have, don't take for granted, is really, really good quality. You can't say world class because it's. It's hard to translate a lot of our subjects and material yeah, I would imagine overseas. Yeah. But the quality of it, it's proper. It's, it's Champions League. Awesome. Very cool. Um, okay, let's go ask a bit more about the social media side of things. You guys only use Twitter and Facebook. And yeah. We've, we'll, <coughs> no, and how are you finding it just using those advertising mediums? It was daunting up in the beginning. I mean, you're very tempted to place an ad in the paper. You know, go yeah. traditional, yeah. yeah. It's just, just put an ad in the start. Just put an ad in the start. And then, for us, fortunately, with, with a guy like Trevor Noah, he has a big online presence and big online following. I think on Facebook, he's sitting on 550,000 followers. He's got in excess of, I think, 75 or 80,000 Twitter followers. Um, it's, you know, one tweet when you push 400 tickets. Like, we got um, the back end of the computer ticket system. So, yeah. on a day to day basis, we can monitor the sales, what happens when, when he went on 5FM, before 5FM, what were the numbers? Oh, so Two and a half hours after 5FM, we check the numbers. Oh, wow. Actually, okay. national radio does help our ticket sales in X, Y, and Z areas. Okay. So, so the copy ticket back end is a bit more... Uh, is no, slightly better than no, no, no. No, the copy okay. back end is no. very agricultural. Okay. It's very basic. No. It'll, it'll tell you like <laughs> basic stuff. The only thing for us is that it tells you very basic stuff in real time. Okay. So even then, um, it makes... You know, for us just to look, if you have to look three or four times during the day, it makes sense. We can plot and see how much we sold, how much we haven't sold. Was was that radio advert effective or was Trevor's tweet effective? Was that Facebook update that we did, you know, did we get penetration from there? So even though 400,000 people got it, how many did it translate into ticket sales? Stats are good. Yeah. Yeah, so that's awesome. The, the joy of stats. <laughs> well, as I said, it shows you what's worthwhile. Yeah, it shows you and, what's worthwhile. And it works in this country. And it does. I think the fact that we maybe don't have we're overseas, well, they got the penetration of the inter- of pe- internet and. But the in a weird way, and you're gonna sit, tell me, Rubin, this is bull- bullshit. But I lived in Ireland for a while as well, and the way people interact when they travel together, and the way you disseminate—that's oh, a bad word. Um, yeah, the way we we send information out from ourselves. Yeah. Disseminate, yeah. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it's perfect. Yeah, it's yeah. Yeah, perfect. It's a perfect word. <laughs> Damn you guys for judging me. <laughs> 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 the way you disseminate information when there's when the entire population of a city is in the city walking and crawling around. We are very much suburban people. Not for a second thing that we city dwellers at all. Because for me, intrinsically, the, the city is do you live in the city or do you live in like a sprawling kind of suburb vibe? And we all live in sprawling suburbs. Yeah, we do in this country. And stuff. I mean, I had to go to Joburg City the other night to meet some lawyers, but that was my first time in seven or eight months I went to a city. But in places like Dublin, New York, London, you're in the city all the time. You're walking past theaters. You're walking past cinemas. You're walking past stuff. You're meeting people. You're bumping into people that say, where are you going? I saw people walking around with tickets for Madonna in their hand, going, where, Madonna? They were like, yes, tonight at the Olympia Theater. You know, things like that. And in South Africa, because we are public, we don't 
move together <laughs> publicly. We're not as Everybody densely jumps in our living, cars. Yeah. We've got little iPods. We get to our things. We sit on a computer. That Twitter, IRC, all of these things back, IRC back in the day. But Twitter, Facebook, all that stuff now is our lives revolve around us in front <coughs> of us. We don't want our lives to revolve around us, to revolve around us out there. Easter weekend, yes, we go to Kruger Park. You know, December, yes, we go to Margate, that kind of stuff. But when it comes to nine to five, in today, there's hundreds of people or thousands of people out there in South Africa that today woke up, jumped in the car, went to the office, jumped in the car, went back home. Yeah, yeah, full stop. Well, so, so everything that we got to get them, you got to get them. Now you got to market to them when they're at the office. You got to market to them when they're at home, and they're not reading newspapers at home anymore. I mean, no. you wake up in the morning, you've got your your feed, you've got your six or seven news things that downloaded overnight, and then you there. When you get to the office, first thing you go il.co.za, news24, iafrica.com, you get your news. People don't do this flippy thing anymore. Um, in a weird way for us, we find this, even from comparison between a city like Joburg to a city like PE or East mm -hmm, London, mm -hmm. huge difference. Uh, PE, East London, no penetration online, hardly, like 20, 25%. Put one ad in the newspaper on a Wednesday afternoon, nice half a page, you, full you color. Get it. Uh, we sold in one day from having that ad in East London, we sold 480 tickets in one day well just from having that ad. It shows you the difference. It shows the difference of how people get their information from yeah. different places. Mm. Which paper? Uh, the Herald. Oh, okay. So the local. The, the local, local, the, the Eastern local, Cape. Yeah. Yeah. The local rag, yeah. yeah. No. Cool. So yeah, so I mean, so for us it was easy. It was easy, but we were, we were fortunate that we had you know guys like Trevor and Eugene that have big followings online, where they're fan base. And again, people aren't following. Like my mom doesn't follow Trevor on Twitter because she's like, I know him, but I don't think he has anything for me to say anything relevant to me as a fifty-five-year-old mm. woman. But there's tons of millions, of thousands of other people that go, I don't know what Trevor and I are saying now. Yeah, and, so and he's his fan. <laughs> then, then, then <laughs> they come for you. Yeah, <laughs> since you're talking about newspapers, I've just been reminded. Um, this Sunday, we all need to buy the Sunday Times because they've got a uh, cool SKA plant. Uh, <laughs> and we were asked very specifically to, to mention it. But I know I'll be Otherwise, on the Otherwise, Tim is sleeping on the couch if he doesn't <laughs> mention it. <laughs> no, he'll be sleeping here. <laughs> <laughs> um, so just this is Sunday. Buy, for once, Johannesburg people, go buy out your local paper. What is it? Of the Sunday Times? Yeah, Sunday Times. And right. time is good as well. I mean, they get good penetration. I mean, we just did a comedy oh. festival in in East, in um, Sibaya Casino, and Sunday Times gets a lot of people. Like in a weird way, if people choose to read newspapers, or in the whole of South Africa, maybe the most read, the most the more times you'll find people opening up papers simultaneously is maybe a Sunday morning after mm. church, that kind of vibe. I just got a, a question: How do you find the engagement of the of the of your audience? On, on online, uh, is it easy to get feedback from them? Because what I've yes. found is it's they cons it's very consumerist still. They just they and consume and, and they never. They, you, you might have a lot of people that are you know you, you send out a tweet you might get a lot of ref a lot of people you know buying tickets or, or but they yeah. never actually add to the conversation. We find that on Twitter sometimes. I mean, we engage them a lot. Like on Facebook, um, do you get like a lot of replies back on a Facebook story? What you do is you just got to engage them first. It's almost as if there's, a, there's a, a master and slave kind of situation. So you go, hey, guys, tickets available um, at the theater in East London, the Guild. You know, box office opens today. And they'll, 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 mail, they'll tweet back and go, what are the prices? So some uh, people yeah. just go, yeah, leave it. Just from mm. the Guild, they'll tell you. Then we go, actually, ticket prices start from 141 Rand. Tell your buddies. But then other people see, hey, you actually you speak to them. And we'll sit. I'll sit for an hour. Mm. Replying to tweets, whatever, just going, just so I know, and, and, and eventually go like, everyone happy, everyone good, cool, okay, no, good. that's good. Because uh, uh, that's it's, one a, it's another channel of information. Yeah. It's another way yeah. where before I remember the funniest quote. Well, it was a real quote, but truth and life and funny. Um, when the the telephone just got to the states and they got the first transatlantic call, and they was like, hi, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yes, and I knew who was the the president at the time, it was Eisenhower or someone, and he said, this telephone thing is wonderful. There'll be one in every major city. <laughs> <laughs> and people are like, wow, yes. And now we're sitting and looking at this table. There's six, seven different clients, you know, <laughs> telecommunications. Young's stuff. case, so I don't know how many. <laughs> people, <laughs> only, people just want information. If you can give it to them and they can communicate back with you. Because essence of communication is not just telling someone something. It's telling someone something, <coughs> letting them process it, and then coming back at you. Request yeah. Com communication is that full level. X out. Yeah. And yes. So the same with Twitter and the same with Facebook. 
Let people know, and if people come back with you, reply to them. Yeah. Mm-hmm. For them, their communication is complete. Yeah. They've got everything that well, they need. You've involved know. someone, so you've, uh, and also you've yes. shown that they're important to you. So you're not just... And also stuff like when we, when we started the tour, we'd say, okay, Durban, um, or Trevor, go, who, okay, Durban, um, what's better venues? Like even just from the beginning going, where would you rather go? To Joburg City? Or would you like to go to Sibaya Casino? Or the ICC? Mm then we found that demographically the people that would be able to afford the ticket to go to Trevor's show would either go to the ICC or the Subaya Casino. The Tal Playhouse, as a blazing theater as it is, is still has that city center vibe to mm. it. A lot of mm. people go, oh, city center, city center. Yeah. Even though Joburg, I mean Durban Playhouse and Sibaya is 30 or 40 k's away, it might as well be Joburg Theater and State Theater in Pretoria. It's two very different places. So... You know, we, we just use this as feedback so we know where to go, what to do. We'll ask people. Um, even while we're on tour, we're there, hey, guys, we need London tonight. Any late night restaurants open that can take a table for six? <laughs> you know, stuff. Cool. And people come back and say, yes, go to the Windmill oh, Roadhouse. That's very it's, cool. it's down the road by the beach oh, road. Cool. Get them. So, I right. mean, the, 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 the communication has to be there. It's got to stem yeah. from somewhere. But don't expect the consumer to go, because lots of times consumers can speak their hands up, pick their hands up, and guys just go, yeah, whatever, whatever. But if mm-hmm. you go there, hey, what do you guys want? I'll come back to you. I'll come back. Just going to move on from this to, to the last question we had for you. You've got a, there was, I know you were talking about printing online tickets. Basically, the guys could print the online yeah, tickets. This, yeah, this, this other tell guys us that about I, I think, what? Yeah, it, it would be great if I could have got Solomon to come here. But um, obviously, you know, comp ticket is as good as they are. They, they're the guys that are here yeah, in South Africa. Yeah. Um, they're not. You, you, well, you think you're going to go pick up your ticket? And yeah, it's like it's a very, I mean, the, the way the world is moving now with like all these Facebook, Twitter things, boom, 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 boom. Um, you know, and they say, yes, they've got a mobile site, but the mobile site is just the normal site in a mobile format. Yeah. yeah. So to get from logging in to buying a ticket is 12 to 13 clicks, th- maybe 14, 15, 15 clicks. Um, there's these guys that I've that working with. If you go to joburgtheater.com, mm-hmm. maybe you can pull it up for someone. <laughs> 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 just, just go while and he's and putting it have, And they're basically, this is the, the platform that they use. Um, um, and basically, is you buy your ticket online, buy and then online th- they would the send you, if I think it was a PDF or something, that you then print? Yeah, they send you a PDF. Um, they've got technology. Obviously, now when the phones come through with the uh, close proximity frequency. Oh, the, oh, yeah, the, the NEF- yeah. NEC. N- yeah. Near, yeah. Field. Near, yeah. Field. Near field. NFC. Near, yeah. near field. Communications. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> says the geeks. Um, cool. It's up there on, it on is. the screen oh, now. So now, this basically, these guys have developed this thing. So, Job- jo- Jobic Theatre... I know it's the ballet. Love it, Love it, and Julia. <laughs> no, no. Um, so basically, they, they, these guys, they can they do so much more on the back end of the ticketing where you can get, uh, for instance, if you look at the bottom, okay, we're looking at the jobbooktheater.com website and that news cafe thing. On the right, that says pre-order your drinks. So you buy your tickets. You buy tickets C15 and C16. You click on pre-order your drinks, it goes to the news cafe menu that's in the venue. Okay. You say, I want two castle lights and a packet of chips and a cheeseburger. That all gets coded onto your ticket. You oh. pay for it up front. Very cool. So when you go to the theater, you scan your thing and the machine goes, welcome Mrs. Hawk or Mr. and Mrs. Hawk, whatever. Um, as you go there, then there's an usher that takes you to your seat. That gets registered to the news cafe. They know, ah, C15 and C16 just arrived in the theater. They know they've got seven minutes to get the stuff to you before the show starts. <laughs> That's brilliant. So I did not even realize they were integrating things like yeah, this. Yeah, that is, and so, that is cool. so And cool. then eventually it'll even be where, and all these tickets are printed home tickets. Yeah. So you just, because people, they found, these people that did the research that found that people want to pay online, number one. And they want to have their ticket in hand as soon as possible. So you probably find as soon as you pay online, you on the next lunch break, you've gone to the computer ticket, you've gone to the checkers mm-hmm. to get, you want the ticket in your hand and you want to pay online. The problem with existing systems is the paying online is limited to and only exclusively credit cards. Mm. Not even check I struggle sometimes with the check card. Yeah. Um, and then you've got to go to the outlet or you've got to go to the venue yeah. to get your ticket. On this system, you can do an EFT. You can pay with a debit card. You can pay with a saving. You've got a card that has 16, co- 16 numbers on it. Mom, you can pay with Mom, it. My thing, which I think is awesome, is you don't need to leave your chair and... Nothing. You Pay for your ticket. You received your ticket. Yeah. A- and now I didn't even know that you could go buy your, your all your things. All your drinks. Yeah. drinks. Obviously, uh, um, the early adopters are jobbooktheater.com yeah. and um, kudos to the CEO, Bernard Jay, who's they've been working on the system now for about three years. Um, 
Combi ticket is is great because it can it has reach and it's got, com, you know, and checkers knows and everybody is, knows reason stuff. But when it comes to usability and, and early adoption of of systems like like you know people have you, they can send you the barcode to your phone so you and don't you have to exactly you don't need to print yeah. it out you can show Scan the scanner the, the barcode off your screen it's you know so I mean we're just waiting for more people to to get involved in this thing and then we can be you know these guys are working on a on a mobile platform where unlike CompuTicket which is um, their online platform just changed yeah. for mobile for a mobile phone. Um, the mobile platform will be like mobile usability. Written so for mobile. Yeah, written for mobile. So instead of going from 10, so like 11 to 15 clicks online to buy a ticket, you go to six or seven. From the time you get to where you want to go to the time you purchase. So they're actually going to be producing it. apps for the phones, I would imagine iPhone and Blackberry. Yeah. and all. Oh. I mean, even JoeBergTheater.com now already, if you go there and you look at it, they've got all their, their seating plans are in 3D. <laughs> They've got a thing where if you buy a ticket, if you buy a ticket in row B4 and you want to see your view of the stage from there, it'll show you from where you're standing <laughs> what view of the stage you get. That is so cool. cool. So you can pick. Wow, he's doing it there. Yeah. I, I look, I didn't even know the, these guys were so far. When I saw it, I, I just heard that it was online printing, which yeah. I knew was quite new. And, and you got to get, cool. you got to speak to this guy, man. Solomon Erasmus, he's here in Pretoria. Um, oh, we'll try to get him on yeah. as well at some point. Get him um, on because he does. You'll sp he's got this other great thing called um, Tycoon Factory, where he he starts up companies until they list. But he like you know whatever, uh, okay. graphic design companies, all sorts of stuff. And when we met Solomon, the f the f when we went for the Jobic Theater invited us because obviously as a production company we've done a lot of business with them in the last year. Um, that even they were like, where would you guys come from? When Compte could contact us the first time, they were like. We've never seen newcomers push so much volume through our system before. You know, like, yes, let's talk about this 10% <laughs> <engine business. laughs> Let's bring that stuff down. <laughs> so, um, so, yeah, so when he started showing us these things and telling us these things and these mobile units, so all these scanners, like, you know, like a speed point. Mm -hmm. So you can, have, you can use this ticketing system at events, at any events. It doesn't have to be. Joburg Theatre, fortunately, they've, their system is fixed because they run their own box office and they got their stuff. So their scanning machines, their, their points of sale machines, are all there. They, well, they've they got a lot of control over it for a beta system and all the rest. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. But I know with, like, you speak, uh, we had Barry off in uh, China and Hong Kong. Yeah. And he was talking about over there, this whole QR system on your phones and stuff. It's everywhere and part of everything. Yeah, even vending machines. You can buy, yeah. you want a cold drink, you can send SMS to the, send an SMS to the machine, takes off your airtime. Now, what these guys are working on as well is, is um, the mobile platform that if they get it right, eventually will straight off your airtime. So you want to go to Coldplay? Don't wait for three hours in the cold. Just send an SMS. You get in a queuing system. If you're within the first 85,000, you still get your ticket. <laughs> and these people come off the back. I mean, they did the ticket thing for the FIFA World Cup. So they can handle, he says, Huge basically fun. in a day, they can handle 450,000 tickets in a day. Where there's no venue. I don't think we'll be selling that kind yeah. of stuff. I mean, we were looking to sell 90,000 tickets a year. And he pretty much laughed at us. He was, <laughs> like, he was like, you know, it's fine. So we work on a, a ticketing system specifically for comedy, uh, Ticket Revolution, or comedy ticks, whatever we yeah, come yeah. up with the name for. And basically, from our point of view now, for Comedy Revolution moving forward is we will have choice on venues. We've got the best venues in the country, from Baxter Theatre to Joburg Theatre to Subaya Casino, Playhouses. Um, and then if you've got a great ticketing system, then off yours... The All user these of the consumer more offers features more is cheaper for the for the our clients, which are the artists yeah. or the comedians, um, and it's a flat rate. So we say instead of taking anything from ten to seventeen percent of your ticket sales as a com, we'll charge you six rand a ticket. Whether your ticket's twenty rand or your ticket is two hundred rand, we're only going to charge you six bucks. And that works, and then you and it works. So sell. now, so now we've got a ticketing solution, we've got a venue solution. Coming off the back of all these tours, we've got a marketing database solution that basically, we uh, honestly, comedians, if you're listening, there's probably no one listening. <laughs> 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 but comedians, if you're listening, if someone cuts a soundbite and posts them, basically, you don't have to be shafted by, by inefficient um, uh, ticketing systems. Well, you don't have to be shafted by inefficient new promoters or, uh, or being shafted by you know, inefficient production. It oh, sounds like yeah. a fairly cool technological article for a certain technological publication. Yes, so you might have another article. <laughs> 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 awesome. All right. 
Um, speaking of comedy and s- comedy and stuff, yes. science, have you listened to The Infinite Monkey Cage? No. Do yourself a favor. It's on BBC. It's a BBC podcast, Infinite Monkey Cage. Um, they've got a stand-up mathematician. He does <laughs> math comedy. Okay. Wow. <laughs> I, 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 I'll have to check it out. <laughs> anyway, yes. All right. I think we're going to move on from there, but sure. Yeah. Thank you so much. <laughs> cool Sorry for the info overload, people. <laughs> no, no, great. No, no, no complaints. What do we do for a I, 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 didn't under, I didn't even realize they were even doing I, things like that yeah. in this country at all. Yeah. Um, Agreed. It's, no, no, I mean, it's, it's, it's very, very, very interesting. Again, you got to, there's, there's, um, and this was just what they gave JoburgTheater.com is what Joburg Theater could handle. They were like, just enough now. We just we got old ladies want to see the ballet. <laughs> <laughs> chill. <laughs> just calm that fuck. Just chill. You know what I mean? Is this now a software company that supplies There's a software Joburg company that, so that runs jobictheory.com, yeah. Okay. Um, they are called. <laughs> <laughs> what about we look at the bottom of the page? <laughs> 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 All right. Okay, let's have All right. a okay, well, yeah, we'll we're going to want to tell us something. What, while they're finding it? Blackberry World. Yes, you yes. have a. Uh, we're, we're now looking at playbook. the Joburg p- at the Joburg playbook? thing. That is a playbook. Playbook. And check this out while you're looking at it. I'm going to try to do this backwards. All right. So there's a teeny tiny little power button on the top there. All right. That you use to switch it on. But you don't need to use that if you pick it up and just want to use it. You just swipe top to bottom on the bezel. Wow. That's lovely. Uh-huh. Switches on. Oh, that's pretty cool. Yeah. That so. They've got some really, really cool UI concepts on this thing, right? Was and this the main big thing that? Got no, the, oh, okay. The, what they what they made a bunch of announcements for the playbook because the playbook was launched earlier in April. Yes, it actually yeah. became available in the US. So the how did you get hold of this one? Sorry, they gave the media uh, reference oh, units oh, because this thing is not finished, not even by a long shot. So they launched this thing because they needed to get something to market. I think their stock price was maybe <laughs> suffering. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. oh, there we go. That's where we got split view, and. So, so the big announcements for the playbook out there was the, a Facebook client, which is apparently something you don't really have on any tablet. Um, the, you might have it on, on Android. Android tablets because it's smartphone. Yeah, it's a smartphone you do it. Yeah, so really, it's on the seven-inch ones. But it's shrunk. The base you have on, like the iPad, I know this. Uh, this you have to buy a separate app that somebody else has written. Okay, so it's a yes. third-party app. Yeah. yeah, this is a Facebook app, not written by Facebook, but sanctioned by Facebook. Ooh, okay. So <laughs> Facebook came on the stage at BlackBerry World and talked about how cool Rim was. Oh, uh, more about how cool Facebook was, but yes. at least a little bit. How cool yes. Rim was, uh, Facebook was on the Rim product. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, and, and so there was that announcement. They, they um, reiterated their promise and demonstrated uh, a native email client app. Yes, yep. that's right. For anybody, no yeah, native for, email. Any, for anybody who hasn't followed the playbook story, <laughs> there is no native email, calendar, <laughs> contact, anything it, on the playbook. If you playbook. link it with your, your phone, there's yeah. something. There's, so you know, if you link it not with any Blackbird phone, it bridge. has Blackberry. to be a Blackbird Yeah, that's a bridge. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it has bridge. to have a bridge. So if you bring this up again, I'm going to try to show you. I don't have a Blackberry link, but there you'll see with Blackberry Bridge set up, eh, there, there's a Blackberry Bridge section. I did that in reverse. Somebody was asking, is, can you use your free internet? Um, yes. Well, through BlackBerry Bridge, you can launch a browser, which seems to be free. Um, so, but that the same restrictions apply. It seems to be free till the 29th of the month to get the bill. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 So I've been doing this and on, then on no more food. <laughs> <laughs> I've, been, I've been doing this on a prepaid ATA account. Yeah. So there's not a lot of RAND on it. So you if you haven't if run was, out yet. And if it was charging me anything, I haven't noticed. Um, but ATA have some neat deals going on. So no, they got that. Uh, what's it? That somebody's fa- we're not sure how much. We think something. it's five hundred megs of YouTube. YouTube streaming, which is something. That just so we're clear for people who, who don't know the BlackBerry product in South Africa, um, your internet is free over BIS except for streaming media. Over what? Uh, Business Blackberry information. information. Oh, BlackBerry. No, I think he's uh, BlackBerry informa- Internet Services. Uh, uh, internet Services. Ma- many apologies. Yes, that's the enterprise. <laughs> enterprise services. Okay. Exactly. So BIS costs you in South Africa sixty rand a month on most operators who care. On certain yellow operators, they feel that it's necessary to charge everybody an extra ten rand. There we go. Fifty rand free. Uh, Five hundred megs free. Uh, YouTube okay. streaming. That's ATA's. That's not ATA's way to break into the market. Mm. Just so everybody. Apparently, also it's knows, quite a good deal. It's, it, it's not a bad deal compared to... And they roam on MTN. That's the irony of it. So they use MTN's network to do it with, but MTN don't have the same offer. Nice. Yeah, we were, we were <laughs> talking about this a bit earlier. So <laughs> we're not going to be that mean. So we're just asking, does it have a USB port? Um, it doesn't have a host. It has a USB... Um, 
just as a normal USB is, charging is, is port. Is it micro USB? It's micro USB. So it's your standard. It's standard. That, that's the one cool thing about the Playbook, where most other tablets use some sort of proprietary, proprietary. connector. No. Ah. Apple. Apple. Samsung also use a proprietary Do connector. Yeah, and oh, the Fippin, uh, the, uh, the one on your your list. Galaxy Tab. The Galaxy Tab now as well is also a proprietary connector. Yeah. So oh. Samsung, yeah. Um, I don't remember the the um, the flyer. I'd have to go look it up No, again. the flyer is not. Is it? Is it yeah, it's ACC all won't do that. Yeah. No, ACC is not. Okay. So, so this has standard micro USB, standard micro HDMI. That's the other thing about the playbook. Micro HDMI straight into your screen or TV. Um, so it's really made for uh, to, to be a, a media consumption device. And that it's it's one of the few things that does very well at this stage is media consumption. Playback HD video, full HD video. Do you, can it stream by any chance? It's the one thing the iPad just doesn't do. And I, I stream can't. like what, YouTube? I want to be able to yes, watch videos yes, off we the hard drive. We, it, oh, you mean off a hard drive? Oh, it's some streaming system. Yes, we were watching, yeah. we were streaming now, early on with uh, the Warthog Beer Fest. Oh yeah, that's YouTube, but I know iPad also does it. I want to be able to stream from a video from a hard drive. Uh, yeah. what, what I what I have seen, and, and this is something that the geeks might be interested in. I don't think the reverse is possible to look at, hook it up to your hard drive over the. Doesn't Wi-Fi. it have some sort of uh, what's it UPnP or something? Hopefully that's UPnP an app people prou- can build. Yeah. Um, so what's in, what's what's encouraging to see is that um, they, they've got Q and X on there for anybody who hasn't followed the story um, uh, as closely as as we've had to. Um, the, uh, and QNX is one of the few operating systems that is actually certified air safe. They use it on airplanes, right? So it's really cool to have BlackBerry <laughs> acquire that <laughs> and use it in a tablet. Anyway, um, they, they um, built a thing in there that you turn your Wi-Fi on and you share the device over the Wi-Fi and then it sets up what looks like a Samba share that you can get to over the Wi-Fi. Just put in a username and password. That's cool. And then, so you can use it on Linux. You don't need the desktop software. But with the desktop software, essentially what it does is it mounts it as a drive. Oh, okay. And then you just copy your files over. But it doesn't, it's not a normal USB device. It needs, you know. Some it's, driver. It, yeah, it needs some sort of, on, on Windows and Mac, it needs a driver. It doesn't really work properly without it. Um, and on uh, Linux, obviously, you can uh, yes. get it over Wi-Fi. Only Wi-Fi. I haven't got it working over USB. USB. Ah, but that won't take long. Does it have, uh, somebody was asking Wi-Fi hotspot sharing? Yeah. It does. Um, and um, But it doesn't have 3G built in. You no, have no, to no. pair it with your... Uh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Uh, this one doesn't because this is a Wi-Fi only model. Okay, but what you I'm do f- get a 3G model as well. Th- it will come. It's not out okay. yet. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And so by that stage, hopefully they have uh, Yeah, hopefully email. they've got a hotspot. I mean, that's a fairly basic feature. Yes, yeah. What they do have, obviously, is BIS connection sharing. So you can actually share the internet connection from your BlackBerry device okay. onto this now. Yeah. Now, the, the really new news that came out of BlackBerry World was actually the announcement of a touchscreen BlackBerry Bold. I don't know if there, there are... The 9980. Yeah, the, the 9900 and 9930. We'll probably get the 9900. The 9930 is a CDMA oh, device okay. with right. UMTS roaming. Right. Um, but uh, So we'll probably get the UMTS version of the... The GSM UMTS version of the device. And um, it's fairly impressive, I must and say. And Microsoft is not buying BlackBerry. No, Microsoft is not buying BlackBerry, but they have... Shoehorned their Bing services yeah. into BlackBerry. <laughs> yeah, so that the, the, that was another big announcement to come out of it is a part tight partnership between BlackBerry and Microsoft. Bing will become the default search provider on all BlackBerry devices. I don't know if that's going to be how that's going to be pushed down, but they demoed it on a torch. Probably pushed down in the new updates. Yeah. Yeah. So they demoed but it on a torch. Apparently, you're not forced to that. You can change. You it. can change it, but it's going to be the default, and it's going to be a default for Maps as search, well. Yeah. And, 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 and Maps, and it's going to be tightly integrated. They showed some neat services. Look, as much as I'm not a Microsoft fan, I must say it's neat. So, in other words, you're walking around, and there's a little thing at the bottom of, of your screen that can go, you know, nearby stuff to do, and yeah. then. It, like queries, Bing Maps, and there'll be daily deals and all that kind of okay, stuff. Okay, so they're going to try a bit four square bit of, I know, in yeah. Google Maps, you can do what's around me. Yeah. No, that's cool. No, apparently the ma- previous map system wasn't <laughs> uh, that great. And with that, it's going to must add a lot more functionality. Yeah. So there's the camera working <laughs> still. You can see the multitasking in action. Right. So here's a neat little thing. You can kill the app by clicking the tiny X, but I can't get to the tiny X. Or, oh, sorry, I'm doing this in reverse. Or you can get it and swipe up. And then no. it kills the app. If I can, you can't do it. You, <laughs> you do keep it taking it. <laughs> no, no reverse. <clears throat> Somebody was just mentioning that they're, you know, they're going to have to. All these things are going to have to go <laughs> micro USB because there, there was that EU law yes. that passed. No, these are tablets. No. Is it only for smartphones? It's, it's 
only for phones that have to do that. Neat. So does um, this look weird if you need to make a call? Yeah. So like no, someone, the Galaxy so, Tab does. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm referring actually using this. Boy, I mean, Just do that again. No. 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 Hi. <laughs> Imagine walking to the airport. Come Can on. you hear me? Can you hear me? What they now need to do is make one of those. Hello. Do you remember those old retro phones? Oh, yeah. So they make a case so you can sit there. <laughs> <laughs> that huge antenna. At, at Blackberry World. So this is like a trick as a South African journal if you go overseas. Is you have all kinds of cool stuff shipped to your hotel room while you're there. Right? So I got my Kindle. So. Um, oh, Toby cool. Shapshack got himself a, a headset for his iPhone. It looks like an old telephone. It's like oh, this lazy. The red <laughs> phone. Yeah, the it. It's the one that plugs in. Yeah, so it jacks in via the normal headphone yeah. microphone jack, but it's, it sits like a normal, you know, yes. dialer. <laughs> very cool, very cool. Very cool indeed. <laughs> yeah, anyway, so um, it, it's looking cool. I don't know if this is going to if this is gonna bolster BlackBerry's market share. Um, be, be, I am impressed, and I must say I've been using a BlackBerry more and more as a messaging device. My primary phone is still my Android phone, and I do like the keyboard. I, I really like the hardware keyboard. Um, what, what irks me is the platform itself. So uh, when you in install or update apps, you have to reboot the phone, and there is no phone on the market that reboots longer than a BlackBerry. Um, I, I, yeah. So uh, yeah. They, they, they do have some core things to sort out still. And the, the updates are a bit flaky as well. I haven't really yeah, noticed that. But also, uh, always the, the guys at work have always got problems. They're updated in the flipping phone. They've lost half the. Uh, it loses all the settings. Oh, wow. I must admit that this one of mine, this, uh, the, the, the torch, is way more stable than the bolt that I've had before. And they're saying on the new one, because I think OS 7 is in here. OS 7 on the playbook. Uh, no, no, no. That's BlackBerry tablet OS. It's oh, a whole new OS. Right. Yeah, OS, OS 7, 7 will coming be coming on the, on the, the bolt touch. Yeah, on the bolt touch. And that's got a. And that's kind of fun. We, we have the uh, red phone you can get for ah. your phone. <laughs> <laughs> that thing is so sexy. <laughs> Reminiscent of the red Toby. Toby's he's, he's a guy. <laughs> yeah, um, oh, that's brilliant. And obviously the, the 1.2 gigahertz processor on the on the new touch bolt. Yeah, yeah. So uh, th th there I are think some they're, they're getting around moves. It. And, and we would have liked the bolt a year or two earlier. Oh, is the touch bolt. Yeah. And they've got angry birds now. They're going to yeah. get, get angry, angry birds. birds. I've got yes. angry farm. Uh, which should is we talk about our in, in topic quickly while we're talking about it? Yeah. What angry what, birds? If if ah, oh, but it is that does have a web kit um, browser browser, which supports HTML5, which means it might be able to run the Chrome Angry Birds. Yeah. Dun, dun, dun. It was now launched to, launched today. Uh, today. Today. Yeah. Or maybe in America yesterday, yeah, but, but it hit South Africa today. Because uh, the world is round. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you can now play Angry Birds in mm. Chrome. In your browser. I tried it. It actually. Uh, it's pretty cool. It, it was. It's quite fast. I was. Yeah, no, scarily it's slick. impressed. It's yeah. slick and it's it's HTML5. It's not flashy or in, if yeah. not flash or anything. I mean, it's it looks like something that could translate well to flash, um, but it will also work well on HTML5 canvas. So yeah, well, that's cool. I, I didn't try it in other browsers because I've generally found uh, Chrome. It, they're not always as fast as Chrome is. Well, I didn't try it in any other browser because the URL is Chrome dot angry. Birds.com. <laughs> well, I, yeah, so I thought now, well, you know, better just, not jinx it. And I see there's a Chrome icon <laughs> in the bottom right over there. Just for shits and giggles, you've got to go to YouTube and check the Michael Bay trailer for the Angry Birds <laughs> movie. Oh, yes, I've seen it's that where he's running around. There's a couple ones. But you it's also watch the one. There's funny. one where they've got the uh, guy trying to do a peace treaty between the birds and the pigs. Oh, no. <laughs> you go, go check it out. It's Angry Birds Peace Treaty or something like that. And it is, it's, but it's live. It's people in like suits and going, I'm not going to have it. It is hilarious. There's um, also another one where guys are playing Angry Birds for real life. And there's a cake. Oh, yes, that, yeah, that's the thing when they shoot things out of... Um, it's a trailer. No, it's, it's a Michael away. Bay trailer. Yeah, no, no, yeah. They, it's, it's some guy in a field shooting down things in a field. Ah, no. <laughs> this was shot like a trailer. This coming yeah. this summer. I've seen it in there. Reaper. <laughs> <laughs> yes, no, I've seen those as well. It was, it was good. Um, I want a playbook. Cool. <laughs> All right. So um, next, uh, yeah. We we're going to just wrap it up quickly because I see we, we're running we're out getting, of time. All right. Here, so. um, okay, we'll mention some of the things. Uh, check out, we're going to talk about Nerdcore Rap, which is basically rappers who classify themselves as nerds. Dude, it is. There's there's one on zero day exploits. Yeah, it's it's it's, it's by it's by MC Font. What's it? Front core and front a lot. Front a, uh, MC, MC front a lot and yeah. dual core. <laughs> <laughs> and if you if you it's if you into your nerd and geek out, go watch it, it out. It's pretty cool. Pretty, pretty classic. Um, I do want to mention the Raspberry Pi quickly. Oh yes, yeah, because this is quite interesting. It's basically almost like a, a 
small PC. Yeah, it is. Well, it's designed to be a small PC. Yeah. Yeah, and it's similar to those old Gunstick Linux PCs. Yep. And basically, it's got an HDMI port and a USB port. Yep. That's it. Keyboard on one side. You plug your, your HDMI on the other side, other, and you've got a PC. Yep. And they want to. The the cool thing is the price. Twenty five bucks. Okay. Yeah. Twenty five. Uh, well, they pounds. said it's fifteen pounds. So that's going to be what? One hundred and fifty two hundred rand. Yeah, it's nothing. I mean, it's almost it's, throwaway. Yeah, and for that, that's what they said. They want to do it, and then uh, with governments and stuff, they might get uh, sponsorship deals so that in these programming courses, and it runs Python. Yeah, and it's Linux, uh, man. It's Linux. It's got a it's got a seven hundred megahertz ARM processor, one hundred twenty eight megs of RAM. Can do your OpenGL ES, and you can um, also plug an SD card in. Yep, it and you'll do it'll do ten eighty video, so very cool. Cool. No, very cool. Uh, um, it's 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 yeah. It's uh, it, they, it will be running Ubuntu on it. Is it Ubuntu that's yeah. going to be running? I thought Ubuntu. it was just going to be running a slim. No, no, no. As far as I know, it's going to be Ubuntu with probably a different winner manager. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, Hans uh, taking out with Angry Birds. Uh, <laughs> Someone's right. bored, it looks All like. All right. And then to our last topic, which we wanted to give, is a local electronic kit supply. Stu, you might know more about this. Yep. It's netram.co.za. Yep. I don't know. I don't know if they knew. We found it the other day. I they sell. The website. It's lovely. They sell a lot of the. Um, Spark fun kits and all the rest. Uh, it's just cheaper to get them quicker. And we ordered some stuff from them and it was delivered the next day. So That's brilliant. Can't complain. Their server cl- customer service was pretty good. Uh, and the prices are not too bad either. Well, that's it. At some point, we with our whole brewing thing, at some point, we want to automate it a bit more. So we've like thinking. And I see they have a cool pump here. Oh, yes. Yeah, they've got some really cool stuff there. Um, and the yeah. Seed Studio. They do Seed <laughs> Studio stuff. So if you want... Um, they've got stuff to do your quadcopters. Yep. They can. They finally, it's a supplier that has got uh, clockwise and counterclockwise pr- rotors and things like that. So very yes, cool. It's, so it's the, yeah, and as I say, the prices are really they reasonable. They look very reasonable so compared to if you take into shipping all the rest And of import duties, you, you never know what you're going to get charged. So yeah. No, it's good. So it's worth it. Go check them out. It's one of the best South African websites for sending stuff like this that I've come across. Yeah. No, it's really quite well done. All right, yeah. and, and that's our, our show for tonight. Um, uh, just to mention, there's no show next week because we're going to all be voting. Yep. Um, um, and we're going to be doing a pick of the week for our next show. So uh, we want tips. So tip, pick, whatever. you. I wish to give you a pick at Alti Starter TV. You make up your own email address. What should we do it on? Uh, we're giving it out to you guys to decide. Um. Also, we wanted to find out what you guys are thinking of the show. Give us some emails, feedback, all the rest of it. Yeah, feedback uh, at letstalkgeek.net. Yeah. And we want to thank our guest, Rabin. Thank, thank you for you coming guys. on. It was awesome yeah. having you I'd love to come back, can't I? Whatever. Yeah, Even no, if definitely. doing the sport thing or the Afrikaans <laughs> thing. I just find that weird. It's called Let's Talk Afrikaans. <laughs> Kom ons praat Afrikaans, man. Ek is amper jylt maal twee talig. Hey, hey, jy het loop Engels, man, en ek het die meisie nie. Nee, pas op wat jylle sê. Well, we, we, we have Cecilia in the RSC <laughs> and the other host here. So. <laughs> cool. Um, thanks, Jan. Thanks, Stuart. Thank thanks, you. Johan. Thanks for mixing again. Awesome. And thank you. You did a much better online. job than I would have done. Uh, we had a couple online people eventually. online. Uh, yeah. Um, I think... Had a couple in the At RC least tonight. Five or six tonight. And I yeah. see we've got some some Evita activists. We've got ten. We've got ten in the RC at the moment. Anyway, uh, we're going to say thank you there and goodbye. Cheers. And don't and remember, no show next week. And yeah. go vote. Go vote. Go vote. Good Kay. night. Good night. Cheers. Thanks for the playbook. <laughs> 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 uh-huh. yeah.